know who he used to fuck with? Karen Parson from, uh, that, what's that, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? He used to fuck with her for real? Uh-huh. How you know that? Because he told me. When I first started dealing with him, I don't even remember how that shit came up, but that nigga was like, yeah, because I was like, oh, some of these bitches be acting bougie and da 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 and he was like, yeah, like, that bitch right there, right? He's like, yeah, that bitch be busting it, too, like, oh, oh okay, like. That's pretty surprising, because I would have never thought Tupac and Karen Parson knew each other, or even Cross Pals, because they seem like the total opposite of people, so that's pretty surprising to me. Hollywood is, you know, the thing about Cali is it's small. It's a big-ass continent, but L.A. is really small. Everywhere you go, you just bump heads. It's like you see these people every day. Every time I, you go to California, you go down to Beverly Hills, Rodeo, and Barney Sachs, like you're going to see mad celebrities. They just, like, be in the same, run the same circles, you know? Right. I want to get your personal opinion on this. Do you think Tupac and Kadada Jones' relationship was serious? I think he was serious, but I think that was a strategic power move. And I don't think that they was going to make it, personally. Yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't concerned about her when I, you know, crossed paths with that girl. I wasn't concerned about her because she was like a spoiled rich girl that never had it hard. Like I said, you know, me and him had a lot in common, you know. And you can't. If, if you know, I can like you all I want to, but if you don't understand where I come from and you don't understand my struggle, we don't have a lot in common, you know, I just think that was a power play. Everything he was doing at that point in, in his life, I think, was, you know, strategically thought of. It wasn't just fly by the seat of my ass. It was, i got to build an empire. Mm -hmm. And she was a spoiled rich girl. You know how them girls are, are Born and bred, they whine and they complain and they they feel entitled and that's not how like like I say that's not how we was brought up. We was brought up a whole different fucking way. We was brought up by any means necessary. You know, you got to get it. Like, you know, every it, it's it's just crazy. Like I say, so much in common. The moving around, being evicted out of places. I fucking had to sell drugs at like fourteen years old because my mother kicked me out the fucking house. Like. She would never be able to relate to those things. And, I mean, sometimes opposites attract, but I just think she was too spoiled. Like, he was going to get tired of that shit, mm. you know? At first, it's all fun and games, and we're doing amazing things, but as time would have went by, I'd have gave her maybe, like, two years. And that's a lot of time. <laughs> but at, at best, she I don't think she would have been able to handle it. It's funny you said that because Tupac bodyguard Frank Alexander said the same thing before. He said that um, Kadada Jones used to always complain about stuff, and um, Tupac used to get annoyed by Kadada Jones always complaining. So, um, yeah, it's funny you said that, man, because um, Tupac bodyguard said the same thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, she, she seemed like a spoiled fucking brat. You know what's so funny? I did a fashion show. I want to say in 1990, 2000, for Tommy Hilfiger, um, my, my, my oldest son, his aunt, she has a event planning company, and we was, you know, she had that account, and me and her were laughing on Christmas, you know, we was drunk, and she was like, girl, she was like, you know, I ain't really tell you before, and I was like, Lisa, I already fucking knew, and she was like, yeah, because she was like, when we were doing that fashion show, and Kadada saw you, she was like, yo, she was just running her fucking mouth, complaining and whining. And she was just like, yo, I want you to shut the fuck up. Like, she was like, she was like, oh, my God, that fucking girl. Uh, like, I can't believe that she's here. You know, she was at the hospital every day. And I'm like, but, bitch, nobody, there were celebrities that came to the hospital in Vegas, and they were not allowed to come inside. They weren't allowed in the private room, none of that. Now, why was I there? Because she was trying to, like, talk about me, like, bad. And she just, like, so annoyed, like, you know. So after that, I stopped going to the office at Tommy Hilfiger's, and I would work in, you know, the office of, you know, Greenlight Events, where we were doing the thing at, because she was like, yeah, she was like, yo, she complained so fucking much about you. She was like, I just wanted, she was like, I was tired. I just wanted that fashion show to be over, like, she was like, I ain't give a fuck about Tupac and you and her. Like, and I was just like, damn. 
I was like, well, it's good to know that I'm on her brain like that. I was like, yo, and I was like, I was like, Lisa, please. I was like, that girl. I said, well, you know what? I ain't mad at her. I was like, because she would have had a fucking problem had he survived. Because once he would have seen me in the hospital, I would have spoke to him and apologized for the two things, you know, before whatever. Like, it would have been on and popping. And, bitch, you wasn't going to stop that. You know, mm-hmm. you being there wasn't going to stop that. And I wasn't going to stop fucking with him. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about you. I don't know you. I don't give a fuck about you. I love him. I'm here for him. And if he don't want me here and he wants to respect you, then so be it. Right. But I don't respect, you know, I'm not going to respect, like, that that situation with Keisha had, he respected his marriage, I would have respected his marriage. Because I came to see him because I loved him and I cared about him. But above all, like, he was my friend. So I'm going to be there for my friend. I didn't come over there like, babe, I want to fuck you and get with you. I came over there like, are you okay? You know, I know you don't belong here, and and I care about you. Mm. He's the one that took it to the, you know, my my feelings still there for you. I I don't don't know, I'm gonna figure this out. Like, so the same thing with Kadada. Like, I'm looking at that shit. Like, girl, bitch, use a pawn on the chessboard, and you don't even know it. But it's all good, cause you you know, I would I would I would not stop fucking with him. Hell yeah, man. I mean, they what they want. Look, I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks or says. That's where my heart was, and that's what I would have did. Yeah, she's definitely stuck up and spoiled. I see that shit when I seen her again. Like, like I said, the first time I seen her, the bitch was like, "Oh, who the fuck is she? Get her out of here." No, bitch, you're not. You can't dismiss me. That that's probably, and that's what you know. Me and my son's aunt probably was like, "Yo, that bitch really. She wanted me to go." She wanted me to leave because she was on fire when she came down. Like, Pac's mother called everybody down to her hotel room to discuss some stuff. And she seen me there. It was like, like, I fucking hate this bitch. And that's why I'm like, why you try to say to my, not knowing that that's my sister-in-law you're talking to about me. You're talking about me. But then it's like, well, why would I be in his mom's room? Why? Why would I be inside the hospital? Why did so many celebrity friends of his come to the hospital and they had to stay outside and talk to people outside the hospital? Yeah. Don't make it like I was, like, uh, you know, lingering and shit. Yeah, the only th- reason I was lingering is because I wasn't leaving there until I spoke to him. And I was told that I could speak to him. <laughs> so, therefore, I was going to wait to speak to him. I was like, but at the time when this nigga is laid out in the hospital in a coma with his lung removed, that's why I just said that that just showed me everything I needed to know about her. Right. Because she was mad, burnt about a female. You don't know what the situation is. And if after you tried to dismiss me, they took us in the back, they probably would have told you, oh, well, he was with her. You know, he was fucking with her and she was there for him when he was in jail. Then you relax. You relax. Right. You could deal with all that later. But if I was there for him when he was in jail and I was dealing with him way before that, you'd be happy that somebody was there. When you really love somebody, love is unselfish. But spoiled brats, they don't understand that, you know? They don't, they, you know, she was just thinking about herself, her feelings, you know? So, and then like I said, she probably had mad bitches he was fucking. You couldn't do nothing about it because Pac was not the type of nigga you're going to tell him. You gonna stop fucking with these bitches, or I'ma leave you. He'll be like, uh, bye. That's crazy. Your dude just died, and she worrying about the females visiting him. I'm um, telling. That's why I said, like, yeah. And then you know, when we all came back, the first night I stayed in his apartment. You know, I stayed with his mother. Like, I slept in the bed with his mother the night he died. Well, Kadada, if it was all that, why? Where was you at? I don't know why his mother did that, but that was the sweetest gesture in the world to me. You know. I just have the most respect for her. Her strength is it's it's a it's a quiet strength that she had that that's just incredible. 